This is a presentation on the product opcroute.net. It is used for automatic transfer of data sources to OPC servers. You can select from a data source as a fixed value for manual entry, an OPC item from another OPC server, this could even be across the internet, a local or remote OPC systems.net tag, which could be also a calculation bringing multiple OPC systems.net tags together into an equation and also from your own Visual Studio application using the product feature opccontrols.net and databases from the product feature opcrecipe.net. Within each opcsystems.net tag you can then set up an OPC item that you want to write to with a target parameter. You can transfer each data source to multiple OPC items if you'd like. You can change the destination programmatically from your own Visual Studio application or manually with the configure application all parameters can be changed during runtime. Each licensed OPC system service can write to unlimited numbers of OPC servers and OPC items on those servers. OPC systems.net implements .NET remoting. So you can transfer data even across the internet. This is extremely easy to set up the opcroute.net product feature. Let's use the configure application found under the program group opcsystems.net. What we're going to do is configure the real-time database under configure tags. We'll select the service that we want to configure. In this example, we'll select the local service. This brings up a list of tags in that real-time database. Let's add a tag to the configuration and give it the name source. We can then scroll down through the tag list and select the source tag. Under the value parameter, this is where the data source value is coming from. The data source can be a fixed value that could also be coming from a Visual Studio application, an OPC item from another OPC server, a tag from a remote OPC systems.net tag, a calculation which can be a math equation. We'll demonstrate this in a moment. It could also be the CPU clock in the form of year, month, day, hours, minutes, and seconds, or even the total number of seconds in the day. Let's leave the data source as value, and notice we can change the data type to anything we'd like as well on the data source. To enable the automatic write to an OPC item, select the Target tab and click the checkbox that says Enable Write to OPC Item. Note the warning at the bottom that you do not need to implement this feature if you simply need to write to an OPC item from a Visual Studio application. If the value data source is set to OPC item and a write occurs to this OPC systems.net tag, then the write will go on down to the OPC item on the OPC server and the target parameter is not needed. Here we're using it to transfer an existing value coming from say a calculation or fixed value or another OPC item to do routing from one manufacturer vendor to another. We'll use the browse button to the right to browse the local OPC servers. Here we'll select the EEI OPC simulator and under sim device we have the group out test. We'll select the OPC item out 10 and select OK. That returns the OPC item from the OPC server that we want to write to. The update rate is the subscription rate for this OPC item to read the value from the OPC server. In this way we can compare the existing value versus the desired value that we want to write. If they are equal to each other, a write does not occur. For floating point values, we will use the float deadband as the allowable range we will then select apply changes and now we will be writing to that OPC item whatever the existing value under the value data source is. Let's go back to the value tab and enter a value of 123. Select apply changes. Now to see what that value is let's just add another OPC systems.net tag and call it target. Select the target tag and set the data source as OPC item. Browse for that same OPC item and we'll use this to read the value back. Select apply changes and now we see the value 123. So if we go back up to the source tag and put in the value 456 
apply changes, then we will see the value 456 coming in on that. Let's go back to the source tag. Let's change the data source now to seconds today. Select apply changes. Under the target tab, we will see the number of seconds that has elapsed in the current day. Also as a data source, if we select the source tag again, let's change the data source to a calculation. An edit button appears to the right, which we can enter a calculation. Here we can insert a tag into the calculation if we select the local service. Notice we can use the direct OPC interface to connect directly to OPC servers and items on those servers. Here we're going to use the simulator server and select the tag ramp. Click OK. Place the cursor at the end of the tag that was just placed into the equation and select insert function. There are many different types of math functions that you can do in the equations. Let's select add. And now let's insert another tag. In this example we'll choose an opcsystems.net tag. Here we'll choose the local opcsystems.net tag which is ramp. Here we have the equation which is adding two tags together. One is directly from an OPC server and the other is an OPC systems.net tag which is also defined to an OPC server. When we click OK and select apply changes we now see the existing value of the data source changing. If we then select the target tag which is monitoring that OPC item that we're writing to we'll see the value changing there as well. To save your tag configuration, select the Save button on the toolbar, enter a file name, and select Save. This is a binary file that you can then specify under Configure Options to automatically load when the OPC system service starts. You can export the tag configuration to a CSV file and then use Microsoft Excel to modify that file. In this way you can set up lots of different routing configurations. If you have questions about opcroute.net, visit the website opcsystems.com and select the sales link at the top. There you will find your local representative.